Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about all the players that we all should be keeping an eye on for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers preseason week two matchup versus the Tennessee Titans. If you guys are new here, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button if you do enjoy these types of videos and leave your thoughts about which players you are going to be keeping an eye on down in the comment section below. But uh, let's go ahead and get started here with the first player that is on my list of uh, players I think we should all be keeping an eye on. That person is Ryan Griffin. And I will say this, coming away from preseason week one, I think that there were a lot of people sour about a few different things, which is completely understandable in my opinion. But I think one of the people who was pretty high up on that list where people were not happy with his overall performance was Ryan Griffin. He had two interceptions, sure. One of those was not his fault. I think you could chalk that up probably more to Tyler Johnson, but the other one, he threw it into double coverage. It was just a bad throw, and aside from some connection with Tanner Hudson, which a lot of people expect, uh, expect at this point in the preseason, Ryan Griffin just didn't look that good. He really didn't do much to uh, already give himself some... Uh, momentum in what is already an impossible situation. I've talked about this many times before. Blaine Gabbard is going to be this team's backup. That is pretty much set in stone. Kyle Trask is a second round pick. He is not going anywhere as well. That leaves Ryan Griffin very, very, very much the odd man out in this equation. Maybe he'll end up on the practice squad. Maybe he'll end up on another team's roster. I'm not sure, but I want to see improvement from Ryan Griffin. I think he is very much, uh, you know, able to do that. I think he's very much able to improve on what we saw in preseason week one versus the Bengals. I know people are going to say, come on, give us Kyle Trask. We want to see Kyle Trask. And I totally understand that. But I do want to see Ryan Griffin go out there, show what he can do, show some signs of improvement from preseason week one. I honestly think that that game that we saw Griffin just play was not a fair indication of how Ryan Griffin usually plays in the preseason. If you guys remember, there have been many times where people have been so excited for the preseason to watch guys like Ryan Griffin. They always call him, you know, the preseason guy, the preseason god, you know, all these other different types of things because Ryan Griffin does usually perform well in the preseason. I think that last week was just an off game. It happens, and I'm hoping for improvement from him in preseason game number two. I also want to see a lot of Kyle Trask, but I talked about him in the previous video. The second player that I have that we should all be keeping an eye on going into this game is going to be Javon Hagen. And I talked about this in the review video of preseason week one. I had Javon Hagen listed as my player of the game. I still stand by that, but listening to Bruce Arians after the press conference, it definitely gave some more insight into what the coaching staff thought. You know, on our end, you know, our viewership from the TV, we saw J Javon Hagen get a couple tackles for loss. He had an interception. He had a forced fumble. Sure, he may have fumbled his interception, but he still got that takeaway, which is still commendable for him to get the hands on the football there. But after that game, Bruce Arians came out and said, you know, hey, Javon Hagen, he did some good stuff, but he also missed a lot of tackles. And that's definitely stuff that's hard to pay attention to on, at, on the TV at times because you're not necessarily looking for missed tackles and things along those lines, which is why it's always important to look at post-game press conferences to gleam more insight into what's going on there. So I want to see what's going on with Javon Hagen. It's been a very interesting situation regarding the backup safety group right now with Ross Cockrell potentially making that full-time transition, if not just doing half safety, half corner cornerback does that take away a roster spot from Javon Hagen if he can't pick it up in terms of special teams play who knows but where in my opinion I think he did more good than say bad in preseason week one a guy like Bruce Arians the head coach of the team definitely felt it was more somewhere in the middle of both good and bad so I want to see what Javon Hagen can do to respond to a little bit of criticism in the post-game press conference from the head coach. And let's see if he can keep up his habit of forcing takeaways here against the Titans. The third player that I have here going to keep an eye on into this upcoming preseason game against the Titans. I'm, you know, going ahead and stretching the rules here a little bit. But it's going to be Tanner Hudson versus Cody. Tan Tanner Hudson and Cody McElroy. Not versus. They're not going up against each other, technically. Um, but... 
this just got even more interesting. I honestly might just have Cody McElroy on here by himself because right now as it stands, Tanner Hudson might not play in preseason week two. He has hurt his wrist. I talked about that in a training camp review video. Bruce Arians was asked about, well, you know, hey, would that affect Tanner Hudson's, uh, you know, time during the regular season? And Bruce Arians came out and said, hey, Tanner Hudson's got to make the roster first and he's on the bubble right now. So him potentially missing this upcoming game, I think would be insanely, you know, detrimental uh, for his potential chances to make this 53-man roster. And I think that it would be a huge opportunity for Cody McElroy to potentially really put his stamp on that roster spot. So we will see what happens. If Tanner Hudson is playing, then keep an eye on both of them. But if he is not, really keep an eye on Cody McElroy. That would be a huge, huge opportunity for him at the cost of Tanner Hudson missing time with an injury. You do hate to see that, but uh, yeah, let's pay attention to both these guys. We'll see if Tanner Hudson is playing or not. Pay attention to that, and uh, let's see how both of them do, especially Cody McElroy, since he's basically guaranteed to play in this game. The second-to-last player or groups of players that I want us all to keep an eye on going into this upcoming game is Antonio Hamilton, Nate Brooks, Herb Miller, and D. Delaney. This fifth quarterback position job right now has gotten so interesting. It's really tough for me to come uh, to uh, keep up with it, rather. Uh, Antonio Hamilton has gotten praise from Bruce Arians before in training camp, uh, pr uh, post-training camp press conferences, if you will. We've heard about that. Uh, he's looked good as a nickel cornerback, not so much on the outside, and he's doing some work as, at uh, special teams as well. Nate Brooks got a little bit of praise from Bruce Arians after preseason week one for some decent special teams plays. Herb Miller has also gotten some praise from Bruce Arians for some good play in preseason week one. But the big guy is Dee Delaney, who I feel, in you know, Bruce Arians has given a lot of praise to. Bruce Arians was upset that Dee Delaney wasn't able to come down with that interception in preseason week one due to a BS call, in my opinion. And he also has been talking about it in the, uh, this week's worth of training camp practices that Dee Delaney has also been showing up in special teams. So, you know, is Dee Delaney in the lead for that fifth cornerback job? Possibly. I honestly think it's a strong possibility. Right now, I, I would say, man, I, I would honestly say Dee Delaney is possibly in the lead based on what we've heard from Bruce Arians and all the things we've been seeing, all the quotes we've been reading, I definitely think that D, that D Delaney might be in the lead right now, followed by, honestly, probably a three-way tie between Hamilton, Brooks, and Miller. It's a tough thing to call right now. It could change at the drop of a hat. Who knows? But um, pay attention to all four of these guys, because, again, I think that's going to be a battle that's going to go all the way till the end, guys, when they make their final cuts for the 53-man roster. So pay attention to it because it really is worth paying attention to watching all these guys get some cornerback snaps, make some plays here, you know, get burned a little bit here or there. It's happened to all four of them. And then also they've all been doing good in special teams as well. It's just, ah, it's so tough to keep track of. There's all four of these guys doing some good things, doing some not so good things. Who do you go with? It's honestly a toss up still in my opinion, but maybe you do give the edge to D Delaney there just based on Bruce Arians most recent comments but finally guys the last player that I want us all to keep an eye on going into this upcoming game versus the Titans is our long snapper baby Zach Triner I have been very impressed with Zach Triner um I've talked about this in the live stream the week one game reactions versus the Bengals Zach Triner puts in that work after he snaps the football man he's sprinting down the field he is uh getting tackles he's really really trying and I've got to give him props for that he looks like a true proper machine out there but also throwing in the other special teams guys I want to see more of Bradley Pinion I think that he has been doing a fine job punting the football I haven't seen you know any really bad shanked punts or anything along those lines so I just want to see more consistency there I want to see Ryan, uh, Ryan Suckup have more chances to kick field goals he didn't get a chance to do a lot in preseason week one, and I want to see that change because I feel like he's been more good than bad recently in training camp, but early on in the process, he was missing half of his kicks on an almost day-to-day -day basis, so I want to see improvement there. I also kind of want to see Jose Borregales as well get some game time action. Again, it sucks that he's probably not going to be able to be kept stashed away on the practice squad. Maybe he will. You never know at the end of the day, but 
I just want to see what our special teams unit is able to do with Zach Schreiner, with Bradley Pinion, and with Ryan Suckup. So, that's pretty much it, guys. What do you think about all the players that I mentioned here? Leave me your thoughts down in the comment section down below. What players are you guys going to be keeping an eye on going into this upcoming game? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Now, we'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.